Hello everyone, Steve from Dark Side of the Wall here again. Welcome to episode 2 of the Dark Side of the Wall, shining on in the lockdown vlog. Still struggling with that word. Um, thank you so much to, for the response to the first one. We were a bit blown away by that actually. We've had over 200 views already on YouTube, all the comments, and all good, thankfully, on Facebook, and I've had various emails and... It's interesting seeing what people pick up on, though. Uh, firstly, my budgies. I have no idea, and I believe they're still doing it now. I can just hear them. Um, every time there's a bit of a noise in the house, they start murder when I'm trying to watch football, volume up to 90. Um, Alan is the one wearing the Manchester City kit, and Dave is the one playing for Norwich and looking a bit fearsome in this particular photo, I think. But, uh, yeah, they're now becoming uh, internet stars, so fair play to them. Um, also, all the people who pointed out that my office is actually really an off license. Uh, quite a few bottles around. Honestly, we get them all for Christmas, so uh, that's my excuse anyway. Maybe they'll be drunk, maybe they'll be just given away in raffles or back as Christmas presents, who knows. Um, right, on with the vlog. Uh, today's episode, um, we're going to be talking to Adrian Stokes, our lead guitarist. Now, Anybody who plays in a Pink Floyd band or goes and sees one will know that they kind of stand or fall by the quality of the lead guitar player. David Gilmore's contribution to Pink Floyd is just astonishing, really. And every Floydy loves the solos, loves his sounds, just loves the way he plays. Every solo is kind of melodic in its construction. And you can't do what we do unless you've got someone who can carry that off. Over the 24 years we've been going, we've been really fortunate in so much as we've had first John Wall, then Andy Nixon, and now Adrian Stokes. All of them supremely talented individuals who can certainly play a guitar. One of the things he'll do is talk you through a lot of his uh, equipment. I had a word with him saying, you know, don't, don't be nervous. <laughs> just people want to see what you do and how you do it and how you achieve those sounds and just uh, set up a camera mate and uh, entertain us for five minutes or so. Um, anyway, Adrian Stokes, over to you. Right, thanks very much, Steve. Uh, and thank you for the notes on the things to cover in, in the, my first attempt at a vlog. Uh, I said maybe introduce myself a bit. I'm Adrian, I joined the band a couple of years ago. Um, I've been playing in bands since I was 11 years old. Uh, and yes, the electric guitar was actually invented then. Um, I've got my mum to thank for getting me started. She got me my first guitar and encouraged me to, to play music. Um, she passed away a couple of years ago and it was that that made it possible to make a commitment to a new venture. And she'd be really chuffed at the way all this has worked out and all the encouragement she gave me has enabled me to continue with music uh, throughout my life. Um, my dad also encouraged me, uh, he passed a long time ago, but I particularly need to thank him for my middle name, which is Floyd. Uh, it was his first name. Uh, as a kid, it wasn't great growing up with an uncommon middle name, uh, but at some cosmic level, I can now see that it was all meant to be. Uh, and uh, as Steve says, uh, I've been waiting all my life to be in this band. Um, there is actually another hidden connection. Uh, it's great to meet Alan and Dave, uh, Steve's budgerigars uh, through the vlog and their Man City and Norwich colours uh, and I can add to that at least in terms of a memory uh, Leeds United because I actually had a budgerigar uh, an all white budgie which I found on a common walking my mum's dog about 35 years ago and uh, managed to catch because they normally kind of just die if they're left out uh, outdoors. It must have escaped from an avia or something. Um, got it in the glove compartment, got it home, managed to stop the dog eating it and it uh, lived with me for, for many years. Its name was Beaks and I think uh, that's partly reflects uh, Steve's. Uh, is it Dave? An extremely mean looking budgerigar and uh, my budgie Beaks was a pretty feisty one named 
beaks uh, after in the same way that the shark in Jaws was named Jaws. Uh, but uh, that, so that's there may be some other connections that come out of some of these vlogs over the next few weeks. Um, the, uh, the notes that Steve sent me suggest I might talk about the audition. Um, well, I was really chuffed to get an audition. I mean, when I heard that, that, that there might be a place coming up in the band, I'd seen Dark Side of the Wall play. Uh, it never occurred to me that I could possibly join the band, but then you know, heard that there was a, maybe a place coming up and that Andy was moving on because of all his professional music commitments. Um, so I thought I'd have a go for it and they were all really kind, went to, to Leicester to quarter for the audition. Um, I played too quiet, but of course I've more than made up for that since. Um, and uh, I somehow got the gig. Uh, it can't have been my middle name that got me the gig because uh, Steve and the guys in the band did, didn't know that I actually had the name for it at that point. So there must've been something else. Um, and I did my first show in June, 2018 in Maidenhead, uh, which was, uh, absolutely fantastic uh, place, to, place to start, an, an art centre, big stage, fantastic crowd. Um, pretty nerve-wracking, of course, but, uh, but really enjoyed it, a real thrill. Um, I'd make up for lack of talent and skill by assembling quite a collection of fantastic gear to try and uh, replicate all the different sounds that David Gilmour produced over decades of, of, of wonderful recordings. Um, and so joining this band has been a fantastic excuse to get lots of new toys. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do next is show you just a quick highlights of some of those toys and those different combinations of gear which I use uh, with the Dark Side of the Wall shows. And I hope you find it of some interest. Hello, well let's start with the key elements of the, the rig that I use. Um, I'll get on to the guitars in a minute. Um, I'm using, as the main brains of the thing, uh, a Line 6 Helix uh, system. This is a combination of effects and amp simulation and cabinet simulation where you can combine all the different sounds that you might need uh, and then call them up uh, when, when you want them as a combination without having to kind of keep resetting stuff um, and that is controlled uh, by a foot controller on a pedal board which I'll show you in a minute um, so the various guitars go into different bits of the the helix and then I'm actually only using the Helix as effects. Uh, I'm not using the amp simulation. Uh, the effects are going into this combo amplifier, which is an eight, a Black Star HD Solo with 60, a 60 watt um, valve amp, two channel valve amp. And like David Gilmore, though, I'm, I'm using the clean channel of the amp. I'm not using any distortion or anything or, or overdrive in the amplifier itself. Uh, all of the kind of distortion gain and, and all the different effects are happening here and then going into the amplifier. Now on stage normally uh, guitarists would have their, uh, their amplifier mic'd up, there'd be a microphone down here, um, but increasingly people are playing things directly into the PA actually at the moment. I'm, uh, what you'll be hearing is coming from this little PA here in the speakers, um, because if you don't have to have um, microphones on stage there's less feedback. We've had one or two issues with feedback. Um, so what actually happens is that there's a, a simulated output that, that simulates the kind of tonal characteristics of a, of a loudspeaker, which comes out the back of this straight into the PA. So actually, uh, when, I'm, when I'm on stage, there's normally nothing coming out of this amp on stage, which means that you can keep the volumes on stage really quiet, which helps uh, you know, with all the, the hearing damage that you can get playing with loud volumes on stage. And we are using in-ears for monitoring. Okay, so that's that's the basic setup, um, which means that uh, when we're doing a say a song like Shine On, um, which has got 
It's a long song with lots of different parts to it. Got the different parts uh, programmed into this, just, just a computer really, um, into this uh, effects unit and I can call them up if I can get press the right button, I can call them up at the right part of the song. Um, so it's got some of the um, main signature sounds, uh, so it's probably got the most, the most famous sound of all. Um, wait for it. So in, in Shine On there's, there's, there's lots of different sounds um, and I have them programmed in here and try to call them up at the right point. So uh, there isn't time to, to do a lot of them, but maybe we'll just a different sound again for the last bit of guitar before the vocals come in. something like the helix is that you can get layers and combinations of sounds in so there's this there's this famous it's the famous bit in between the verses On the record, it's a double tracked, at least double tracked guitar part with something playing up an octave higher. But with this, with the pitch shifter, um, you can get that little uh, kind of higher tone coming in as well. So that's uh, that's the basic way in which the the rig works. Um, just maybe I should say a little bit about this particular guitar, which is the main guitar I, I, I use, uh, which is a. Uh, an imitation of David Gilmour's Black Strat. Uh, it's a fantastic instrument to play. Um, so it's got the the shorter uh, tremolo arm than uh, normally they're longer, which means that it kind of sits in the hand. And when you're doing all David Gilmour uses a heck of a lot of the, of tremolo to kind of bend to bend the notes up and give it more expression. So it's got that, and it's also got. Um, a little switch here, so in addition to the five pickup combinations that you get normally on, on, on a Strat these days, it's got this other little switch which enables other combinations. For example, it can bring in this pickup with the bridge pickup, which gives a kind of a, it's a different kind of a sound. Um, and it's partic particularly used that sound on um, a brick in, another brick, brick in the wall, uh, where it's a it's a subtle point really, but uh, this the sound for the the funky bit. Which is that is different. I mean that's with the, the then if you, on an ordinary strat you'd get I don't know if anybody else but I love the the difference. Yeah, so that's what that's what that's going on with. 
And of course, with another brick in the wall, it wasn't played on a Stratocaster and I can't switch guitars uh, mid-song. So when we come to the solo there, I'm very sure it's a bit of a compromise and have to play it on here with a different sound. And just, I hope that it's, it's a reasonable reproduction, but it was actually played on a, uh, a Gibson Les Paul with P90 pickups, but um, you can't actually always manage to switch things uh, enough during during the song. And this I've already already nearly fallen over enough times trying to switch between all the different instruments. Okay, so that's that's the main guitar, the uh, the imitation of, of David Gilmour's Black Strat. But one of the things to notice about Black Strat is, or Black Strats of this uh, model on this age, is that they've got 21 frets. And that means if you're playing in B, you run out of a fret for certain parts that they you were played in the uh, studio. So uh, that's why I do also have another Stratocaster with 22 frets, which I'll show you next. Okay, so this is the other Strat that I use. This is a, a really nice one. It's, it's, I think it's called a, it's an American made Strat. Strat, uh, I think it's from a series that was called American Professional Series, but uh, which I started about three or four years ago. But it's it's got um, pickups which really beautifully re recreate the kind of vintage sounds, but they've got much lower output than the Black Strat. Uh, the pickups on that are much more powerful, particularly the bridge pickup, um, which which means that there are certain things that uh, that work much better live with that. But with with this. Guitar. It does have an additional fret uh, up here because uh, most guitars these, these days would have a, have 22 frets. Um, and in money, that's where it all goes. That with that really really high bit. But it's interesting that when you watch a lot of the recordings of Pink Floyd live, that uh, David Gilmour doesn't actually play the same solo live as he did on the, on the album recording. Partly because he's pl often playing a guitar which doesn't have those additional frets. Um, so in, 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 in Money, uh, we've got that kind of signature tremolo sound, which is going on in the, in the, in the background um, during most of the, of the song. But then in, in the last solo, just to the point that it, when it goes, it's that bit, then it goes all the way up here. Then a really big bend. But it's this bit here when it goes, which takes you right up the end there. Uh, it's quite hard to hit that. Yeah, you can see, quite hard to hit that. But um, th that's what I would use this guitar for, as well as being back up in case I, I break a string on, on the main strat. And it's a really nice guitar, it just doesn't quite have the oomph of the, of the other one. Uh, but I really love playing it. Okay, this is. Uh, Fender Telecaster, which uh, David Gilmore used on a few, few numbers, but particularly on, uh, in terms of the ones we've got in our set on Run Like Hell. Um, it's, uh, so in Run Like Hell, you've got the delay thing going. All that stuff. Um, and we'll see. Sounds that sounds going. Um, so the the Telecaster just has, just has that chime, which is uh, works so well for, for this song. Um, and it's tuned in drop D, uh, gives it a bit of oomph. But the interesting thing about this one is where where David Gilmour plays it with his thumb crossed across here. Unusual, but it works. So you can keep these these strings at the bottom uh, ringing out nicely, and then you've got the so it's not absolutely essential for me to to bring every guitar to every gig, but uh, it's 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 great to have the option to do that and to, and to actually play the right kind of instrument to match the song. So that's the Fender Telecaster, had this a long time, very nice guitar. So this next one 
is a Line 6 Variax. Really, it's the, the one that could replace all the others. Um, this is quite a, a neat thing. Uh, I take it to use particularly to, for, a, for one feature of it. Um, it's, it's got ordinary pickups, but it's also got pickups which uh, do some computer wizardry and can simulate the the kinds of sounds that come from lots of different guitars. So that's got it just, just set it uh, to sound uh, like a Stratocaster. Um, that's, that's the ordinary pickups and then with the, with the simulation simulation you get uh, uh, some attempt to reproduce the tonal characteristics of, of other guitars uh, but it also incredibly can retune the guitar uh, as you play so this is at the moment what you're hearing is tuned uh, in the way that a guitar would normally be tuned and you fret it to make your chords or whatever but uh, for some Pink Floyd songs, uh, and obviously lots of bands do this as well, um, the guitar is tuned differently. Um, Fearless is the, is the song that we do which uses different tuning. So if I switch the setting for that, and, and the great thing is that through the Helix, uh, can control the setting on the guitar and vice versa actually. So that's pretty handy. So if I just play... See now, just strumming down, I'm getting uh, I'm getting a chord. I'm getting a G chord. It's it's a rather odd tuning. It's tuned to G B D G, and then two Bs at the top. But that's without so without having to do any malarkey with with the tuning pegs, you get the sound. Uh, and in Fearless, that that uh, that signature uh, kind of rising phrase. <laughs> So that's uh, pretty handy because retuning a guitar that far away um, from the normal pitch is pretty tricky live and it will tend to slip. So uh, having this guitar to do that with, um, but also knowing there's another backup. So if I do have problems with a guitar, say I break strings on two guitars, uh, then this one uh, is there to, to use in an ordinary way. Uh, it can also even uh, simulate the acoustic guitar. So for if I was had to use it um, on something like Wish You Were Here. And it's even got 12 string in it. But uh, John plays that part, uh, so I wouldn't have to do that, but it would be possible to play. that part over the top and it's with a something that sounds a bit like an acoustic guitar rather than sounding like uh, a Strat which is not right okay so that's the the line 6 variax a very a very handy thing um, and uh, I, if I had to I just could take one guitar to a gig this could do the whole job so next we have one of the signature instruments from David Gilmore's playing the, the, the lap steel guitar. Uh, this is a Duesenberg Pomona, um, which uh, it's not a guitar that uh, David Gilmore actually used. This, this did, little guitar didn't actually ex exist. He, he used others, but it's tuned the way he had tuned for some of the main uh, most famous songs. This one has these cunning levers on it, which means that it's possible to... <laughs> To change the pitch uh, for, th for country playing, which, which uh, wasn't the way David Gilmore used. He just used the, the straight, didn't use levers and so on. Um, but uh, it's a really important part of the overall sound. Um, it's a little bit tricky to play in this setup because I want to move everything round. And one of these days, I'm going to knock the whole thing over or end up in a right old heap of tangled metal on stage. But um, uh, let's just give you, give you a bit of an idea of how that works from. To start a great gig.
yeah, that's the that's the lap steel guitar. Uh, features on Breathe on, and I also play it on Wish You Were Here to get that part in because I think it's a really uh, subtle and uh, kind of vital part of, of of that song as well, which really gives gives colour and, and and texture to the song rather than just strum through it on acoustic guitars. Okay, this is the the last one to show you. Uh, this is my latest acquisition, bought under lockdown. Um, uh, this is a Martin D28E uh, acoustic guitar with uh, a built-in pickup system. It's, it's, uh, I'm having great fun experimenting with this. Uh, it's, it's the LR Bags Anthem system, which it's got a piezo pickup, which kind of senses vibrations in, uh, in the, built into the bridge, but it's also got a microphone built in as well. You can, there's a little control here you can use to, to blend the two so you can get a, a more authentic acoustic sound in a live setting. Um, I'm, I haven't plugged it in for this because it'll be uh, more than loud enough for the purpose of, of what we're doing now. But this is, uh, as I say, my latest acquisition. Uh, uh, David Gilmore did play uh, a Martin D28 um, other acoustics as well. Maybe I'll get some more of those over the years. But uh, uh, for now, this is uh, this is my uh, best acoustic guitar, and it's a real real pleasure to play. Um, the only song that I uh, play acoustic on, I think, um, is at the moment is uh, "Wish You Were Here," uh, and I think it's a really important part of that's to actually play a, an acoustic. Of course, you could play the parts on electric, but I mean, it doesn't have the same kind of vibe to it uh, and it really does need to be an acoustic guitar um, but we are working on some other uh, new materials that have got acoustic guitars in it so it may get some outings in future on, on some other material so this is the Martin D28E I uh, wish you were here Okay, uh, yeah, that's just about it. Uh, the end of a not so quick run through so if you're still watching thanks very much I hope that wasn't too nerdy uh, but anyway uh, thanks Steve for the invitation to contribute to the vlog uh, back to you me again right firstly thank you Adrian that was really cool mate and I'd like to think whether you're a musician or a non-musician there's large parts of that that you won't have seen before and it's really interesting to see how he does what he does on taking on the role of David Gilmore's instrumentation within Dark Side of the Wall. We hope to talk to a different band member each and every week and just as a teaser for next week we're going to be talking to our sax player Mr Pete Taz Morgan who's going to give us some again using this word <laughs> insight into what he does and how he came to join Dark Side and um, the role he takes within it. Everybody loves Taz, he's a big character and, uh, and I think it should be quite fun to listen to him. He joined us in 2011, I think. I will probably put me right if that is incorrect. And audiences just respond to everything he does in terms of all the Dick Parry-style solos. And I always joke on stage that he, 
loves coming on for the band introductions the most because he's not got to play anything, he's just got to stand there and do that to the audience, and he loves that, moves it every time. Um, right, well, I'm going to wrap up this one. This is vlog two. Look out for vlog three next week. You can check this out on YouTube where we have our own official channel. All the info will be down there uh, for our links to Facebook and Twitter and things like that. And please subscribe. We'd also love to hear from you. If you've got any comments or questions that you'd like to ask us about the shows, about the music, about us as people or anything like that, then feel free, you know, just stick a comment on um, Facebook under the video or just send us an email or whatever. Just, we'll answer them and it'd be nice to get this a bit more interactive actually. So hopefully that will be the case. See you next week and we look forward to hearing from Taz. Bye everyone, shine on and stay safe.